We are back on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180. Our guest by phone, Kyle Olson from the Education in Action Group. Kyle, uh, I- in your movie, and I got to watch part of it, A Tale of Two Missions, you talked to uh, Mayor uh, Rahm Emanuel from Chicago, and he, as we all know, used to be the chief of staff for President Obama. And I, I was really surprised. I almost fell off the chair when he actually talked about um, you know this this system being you know not a good system and how he's for private schools and um, you know he, here you're looking at his boss who did everything he can to end the voucher program in DC again so you know how do, how does his position square with his ex-boss's position well I don't think Rom um, supports vouchers I've never seen him address that one way or the other uh, but clearly I think he came into office um, with a with a situation where his school district uh, was seven is seven hundred twenty million dollars in the red um, operating budget that doesn't take into account pensions and you know uh, legacy costs that's just simply operating budget but then on top of that he's got a fifty six percent graduation rate and he has he has schools that are just literally just out of control. And he came into office, and um, and what he told us um, on camera and, and off camera was that uh, the, the deal in Chicago for the last decade or more was that uh, teachers are getting a 4% raise each year um, so they wouldn't strike. And that was what uh, the, the politicians didn't want to strike um, because it would be devastating um, to, to the city. And so they were essentially paying off, uh, paying off the unions and the teachers by giving them, you know, pretty healthy raises each year. And he came into office and he said, we can't do that anymore. Uh, we can't afford it. Uh, it's not good policy. And so we're going to change that. And, of course, you know, the unions just absolutely raked him over the coals for that. Um, but then in addition to that, he sees the value that charter schools can bring, that school choice can bring in terms of creating competition um, and, and creating better schools, better opportunities for students. And so he's been moving to to create more of those as well. And so I just I think he's a, he's an interesting case where his background in coming up through progressive politics um, in, in the city of Chicago and now doing taking the actions that he's taking is very interesting. But I think the difference there is that he came into office, um, did not seek any union support, did not receive any union support, and he basically did it his way in terms of his election where President Obama, and I think Democrats generally, they need the teachers' union. I mean, they need them for their resources, they need them for uh, for their manpower and that sort of thing. And so I think um, President Obama has been, for Democrats, I think he has been okay, um, and that's, that's a okay underlined, um, when it comes to school choice. Um, clearly, the, the voucher program was a huge disappointment. Um, and Speaker Boehner fought for that and, and ended up getting it back, and he'll probably have to fight again for that in, in order to get it back. Um, but the bottom line is, to me, is that President Obama simply is not going to be there um, when reformers need him because he, he needs the teachers' union um, to get reelected. He needs a lot of help to get reelected, although I think he's going to get reelected, and Marty and I argue about that all the time. But... One of the things, I don't know if you're aware of Kern County, Bakersfield, California, but one of the school districts out here just uh, reduced the teacher's pay by about 2% this coming year, and they've also implemented what they call a MERC, M-E-R-P, which is a medical expense reimbursement plan. And what they okay. do is the teacher, if, they have, if they're married and their spouse has coverage to another employer, then the other employer is obligated to pick up the spouse. And the teacher will be reimbursed for any out-of-pocket expenses. Now, to counter that in Kern County, the, the uh, county of Kern passed legislation under their plan that if the teacher tries to come on their plan, they won't be allowed. It's pretty interesting to watch how all this is happening. Mm-hmm. And, and this is part of the future. We're trying to get control of expenses, trying to eliminate the union impact, but it's really tough. It's really tough. That's right. And and and, uh, and so what the, the way things are going to shape up in Wisconsin is you've got – the one side saying, you know, we had a huge financial problem. We needed to give flexibility to government, whether it was the state government or, or local units of government. We needed to give them flexibility to make sure that they are sustainable and they are achieving their mission in terms of educating children. 
uh, and, and just very basically uh, preparing them for life. But then on the other hand, you'll have the unions saying, well, they, you know, they, all they wanted to do was take away our rights and, and all of that, you know, all of that stuff. And to me, the bottom line is, I mean, we've got to make sure that this, this system is sustainable. And there's no better example of where it's not sustainable than in California, where you have, I mean, huge pension obligations, you have just, you know, out-of-control contracts um, that just are not sustainable. And, and you don't have a governor and a legislature that are willing to, to really aggressively take those things on. And, um, and from what... <coughs> From what I follow from California, you know, you've got these tax proposals that are coming up, and I mean, these are just these are band aids on the problem, and they're and they're excuses for the problem, and uh, and so I mean, it's just it's never I don't see how it's going to get better um, until you know people are really frankly seriously talking about bankruptcy um, as a way to get out of these contracts because I mean, just contrast California with Wisconsin. And, you know, people can, can argue about rights, quote-unquote rights, all they want until they're blue in the face. But if you can't afford what the quote-unquote rights are supposedly giving you, then what, goods are the, what good are the rights anyway? Exactly. We're having a conversation with Kyle Olson from the Education in Action Group. Kyle, you know, in California, uh, in our legislature, both houses, we are only three votes away from having a Democratic supermajority. Super which is going to devastate this this uh, state. I don't know what it's like in Wisconsin. It is um, the 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 margin is pretty narrow in the Senate. Um, in the Assembly, there's a little more. With the Assembly is the House, um, and so things are pretty narrow. And in fact, um, so the, the the biggest focus right now is trying to recall the governor. But the but the the unions and others are also trying to recall some more Republican senators. So they can flip the Senate, and I think that probably is their fallback position: is that you know they may not recall Walker, uh, but they may pick off a couple of those Republican senators, and they'll flip the Senate, and then there will be just there'll be gridlock. See, and that's um, and that's not good for anybody. That's just going to continue the existing status quo, quo, which is not good for for anything that, that that we're trying to do with education. That's right. Yeah, Kyle, you you were talking about some of the hot spots in the country. Where, where are some of the hot spots where, where this is coming to the head in in the rest of the country? Well, we've we've so we talked about Wisconsin. We talked about Chicago. Um, in Michigan, they've been passing some pretty uh, some pretty meaningful reforms. Um, a lot of states are looking at digital learning, um, which is basically a virtual education where. Um, students can uh, receive instruction via the internet, via computer, um, and so schools and, and states are really looking at uh, embracing technology, which I think can revolutionize um, and decentralize uh, education, which I think is a very healthy development. Um, I mean, there are just lots of uh, interesting things going on all over the country. Um, Louisiana is looking at creating a voucher program. Indiana just passed a, a, a statewide voucher program. Uh, I mean, there's just lots of things that are geared towards uh, breaking down the monopoly, the government monopoly that we have in education, empowering parents to be able to pick, you know, whatever option best meets their needs, um, and and uh, as we were talking about earlier, uh, creating policies that put the interests of children first. How do we end tenure? That's my concern. Well, um, if you want to talk about California, um, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you'd have to. My understanding is I think it's in the contract. Uh, didn't, didn't Schwarzenegger want to, uh, wasn't there a ballot initiative or something about that to try and extend, um, uh, extend the time where, because I think currently it's, it's three years, two or three years where a teacher can get tenure, and he wanted to extend it another two years, and, and uh, you got California teacher. Yeah, the California Teachers Association just spent millions and millions of dollars to defeat that. Right. And uh, and to me, um, I mean, it, it it takes legislative action or or some sort of an action to to change the to the change the Constitution if it's if it, that's where it is. Um, but that's to me, I mean, that's where it that's the direction that we need to go. And it's not about you know making teachers live in fear and all that sort of thing because I mean. Who really lives in fear in the private sector of you know having their boss come in one day and just boot him out? I mean that just doesn't it doesn't really happen. 
And I'd, I've yet to meet an, uh, an administrator who is happy about firing people, um, and, and especially in schools. And so what it's about is making sure that we have the best, uh, the highest quality uh, teaching instruction um, in our classrooms. And, and that's what it's about. And unfortunately, union policy runs, you know, completely contrary to that. And so, and so giving people tenure, which essentially is a job for life, is the wrong solution. Judging people based on how long they've been there and not, not uh, how well they're doing their job is another bad uh, policy that needs to change. Um, I mean, there are so many things within our government education system that needs to change. Um, but states are getting there, but unfortunately California doesn't appear to be one. No. Kyle, we've got about 30 seconds left. Uh, where can people get a hold of uh, your organization and, and A Tale of Two Missions? What's the website and the phone number people can call? Sure. I'll give you two websites. Um, one is educationactiongroup.org, which is our main organization site. Um, and then you can see the, the movie at uh, twomissionsmovie.com. Um, and if you have any tips or ideas for us, you could reach us at our office uh, number, which is 231-733-4202. Great. Kyle, thank you so much for the time. We'll be back in 167 hours on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio, News Talk 1180.